Come and See, first requested to me by Andrei Radon and directed and co-written by Alem Klimov, is a 1985 Soviet war drama film that takes place in 1943 Soviet Russia during World War II when Nazi forces begin invading Russia. The story primarily follows a young boy named Flora who finds himself caught in the middle of all this chaos, but at the same time wants to prove himself. He maneuvers his way through the insane landscape that has been occupied by German forces, and eventually his primary goal is simply to stay alive. As his environment becomes more chaotic and violent, he's forever changed because of it. All right, so Come and See is an experience that I think a certain audience would enjoy. And I think that audience is the film buff crowd that's looking for some sort of unique artistic statement in their cinema. Come and See is just a unique type of war film because its story is minimal and the characters are minimal too. And its foundation rests very heavily upon showing the viewer the insane amount of destruction and despair that war actually brings. This movie is pretty brutal, I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty brutal. And there's definitely some scenes where I was like really affected by it because there's not many moments where the viewer is allowed to turn away from the violence. The film is very focused on being genuine and not pulling any punches in their efforts to depict the brutality of the Nazi regime and just how much pain they inflicted on their enemies. So yeah, it's pretty brutal. So yeah, again, this is not a film for everyone. It kind of felt like The Pianist in that way, but more brutal in a lot of ways. There's a tendency here to play up the violence and chaos in an especially disturbing kind of way. There's a few scenes where the footage is sped up and there's shots that are like awkwardly framed and hold for long periods of time. And these scenes just in general, just go on and on and they're meant to just make things feel disturbing and off kilter. It works though because the movie feels like one continuous event. It almost doesn't even feel like a movie in that way. It kind of just feels like a crazy documentary of sorts where you're watching this young boy travel his way through the Soviet Russian countryside in just a desperate attempt to survive, like I mentioned. Plotting characters are minimal, and this movie focuses on survival instead. But at the same time, Flora is not just about survival. He's about proving himself. He's growing up in a tumultuous time, to say the least, a time where everything around him is in chaos due to this war. So he doesn't know any differently. So what he sees around him is the men taking up arms and fighting the Nazis heroically, so he wants to do the same, until he realizes that this lifestyle is not nearly as glamorous as he envisioned it would be. And by that point, it's already too late. He's already in this war for good at that point. So what I liked about watching Flora evolve was that his condition as a pure human being only worsens. He looks more and more broken as the film progresses. I think the point here is just to show you how difficult a time this was to live in for these people. The environment breaks them, and it's pretty devastating to watch. That said, the atmosphere is pretty damn awesome. The people walking around the countryside, the houses, the soldiers, there's a lot about this movie that's very immersive and very engaging in a grim, dark kind of way. But this film just really knows how to recreate history and make it feel real, but at the same time, kind of odd and off kilter as well. I found myself engaged with the style that at most points focuses on dark realism, and every now and then throws in some oddities through editing and such to just play up the chaos and deteriorating mental state of the characters. It's a unique film in the sense that it goes for both of these vibes simultaneously, and they actually do pull it off. With these type of films, there is sometimes a tendency to overdo it. There are moments where things get a little too odd, and it sort of diminishes the weight and the impact of the chaos that's going on around these characters. There's a point in the film where Flora meets this girl for the first time, they meet and things are going fine, and then they both just start laughing and looking into the camera in a really awkward way, and then, the girl starts dancing and it just gets fairly unusual fairly quickly. This to me was a moment where subtlety was needed. This sort of interaction needs to be subtle and nuanced so that the viewer can feel the weight of the environment and how it somehow brought these two people together. Instead, we get a weird scene where two kids just start doing peculiar things and it just feels off. That said, the performances were really good. There's several characters that come into the fold at various points, but they sort of come and go aside from Flora. Alexei Kravchenko, whose name I think I'm pronouncing correctly, but you guys might have to correct me. He leads the way here regardless, and I thought he did an excellent job portraying the innocence and curiosity of a kid, and when you combine that with an environment that's full of destruction and chaos, you also get the corruption of that innocence. The way he becomes molded by his environment as things progress was pretty remarkable to watch, honestly, because after a while you realize he's just broken. He no longer feels like he has any attachment to anything, and he's directionless and stuck in this terrible, terrible world and environment. It's sad to watch, like I mentioned, but at the same time, fairly remarkable because you see how war affects children specifically, something that's often overlooked in cinema. This movie holds up well. It does a good job of reeling you into a setting that's very unfamiliar to us in any real way. Sure, we've seen World War II and Nazis depicted in a lot of different films, but we haven't lived it. 
This film makes you feel like you're living it. It doesn't feel like a story. It's not a manufactured journey. It's a film about desperation and how war corrupts the innocent. And it sends messages not through the characters necessarily, but through the scenes themselves. We don't see this world through the lens of a certain character necessarily. We see it as it is. It feels more horrifying in that way because it kind of makes you feel like you're there and you're stuck in a Nazi controlled Russia. So yeah, not a movie for everyone. There's something great about the ending though. It perfectly encapsulates what this story is and what it's actually trying to say. It's not about trying to make you feel good. It's not about providing growth and resolution for the characters. It's about the opposite of those things. It's about showing exactly how war affects those trapped within it and how our environments can shape who we ultimately become. I think the ending speaks to that perfectly. But as we wrap up, let's take a look at the pros cons. As for the pros, I thought Come and See delivered a unique and brutal story about war, an excellent sense of atmosphere and environment, a really strong leading performance, and an ending that perfectly encapsulates this story. As for the cons, I found the film often overdoes it sometimes in an effort to be a little too artistic. That's honestly it though. I'm gonna give Come and See a 9 out of 10 and recommend you check it out, but only if you can handle the brutal imagery and the grim approach. Remember that it's a foreign film, so there are subtitles. So have you guys seen Come and See? What did you think of it? And if not, let me know why not. And also let me know your favorite movie about Nazi Germany. For me, it's probably Schindler's List, but this one was pretty good and so was The Pianist. But still, I wanna update you guys actually because I wasn't able to actually post last week. That's because I have so much schoolwork and so much full-time work plus teaching and other part-time work. There's a lot going on at this point, so I'm going to upload as regularly as I can. But like I said, sometimes there may be like one week where I don't post a video or everything, but typically I'll have two to three videos out a week, so not, no problems going forward. And I have a ton of videos coming up. I mean, I have a God of War video. I have an, a bunch of video essays coming up. I have a bunch of product reviews that I got to get to, so that's coming too plus all the requests and all the new releases as well. So be on the lookout for a bunch of new videos and you can always follow me on Twitter if you want to. I post updates there pretty much every day. You'll see my Twitter tag at the end of this video. I think it's WFoxification. I can't remember it off the top of my head, honestly. But still, you know, either way, this is Will Foxification signing off. And if I hear from you guys on Twitter, that's great. Feel free to follow me there and share your thoughts. I'll follow you back. So anyway, see you in the next video.